In this video we're going to see how to smooth skin with Photoshop Elements. We'll see how to go from this to this. Hi, I'm Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. Let's go over to Elements and get started. This is a photo that I found on morguefile.com and that's a place where you can go and download photos for free. If you're interested in this one, it's by Leroy Skelstad. If you go to morgue file and search for portraiture, it should pop up as the first photo in the results. This technique I saw done with the full version of Photoshop on YouTube and the channel is called Pix Imperfect. I thought it was a great technique to quickly smooth out skin, so I decided to adapt the technique for Photoshop Elements. The first thing to do is duplicate the background layer. To do that, I'll press Command-J on a Mac, or it would be Control-J on a PC. And now in the Layers panel, you can see we have a new duplicate layer called Layer 1. The next thing to do is invert that new layer. You can do that by pressing Command-I on a Mac, or it would be Control-I on a PC and we get that strange look to it. Next, let's change the blend mode of that layer to vivid light. So click on where it says normal, and then scroll down to vivid light and click on that. We get another odd look to our image. Now go up to the filter menu and choose other and high pass. And I'm gonna move this dialog box out of the way. We have this radius slider. You can see if I put it all the way over to the left, there's no difference in the image. And then as you move it towards the right, we start to see the effects of it. What we're going for here is to make the skin look super smooth, but we don't want it to look too blurry. So for this image, and it's going to depend on the size and resolution of the image that you're working with, but for this one, I found that between 20 and 25 radius is a good setting. So you can see what we have on the skin on her face, and that's kind of what we're looking for, nice and clear. So I'll click OK to close the High Pass dialog box and accept our change. Now we want to go up to the Filter menu again, and this time choose Blur and Gaussian Blur. I'll move that out of the way. What we want to do here is just bring back a little bit of that skin texture from the original. If I start moving the slider up, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this image so we can see better what we're getting. Let me go back to zero. See, we're starting to get a little skin texture back under her eyes and on her cheekbone. Again, it's going to be different for each photo, but for this one, I think 4 pixels is a good amount. I'll click OK to close that dialog box and accept the change. Now we want to add a layer mask to this new layer 1, but we want the layer mask to be black so that the whole layer is actually hidden. To do that, we can click the Add a Layer Mask icon in the Layers panel, but if we do that, we would get a white layer mask, and we want a black layer mask, but if we hold down the Option key on a Mac, or it would be the Alt key on a PC, as we click the Add Layer Mask icon, we get a black layer mask. That black layer mask is hiding all the effects of layer 1. So over in the active image area, we see the original image, which is really our background layer. If you don't understand how layers work, I have some videos on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. You can search for those, and I also sell a course that explains how to use layers, and you can find that on my website. We have a black layer mask and it's active. You can see there's the blue border around the layer mask. If it's not active, just click on it to make it active. And we want to get the brush tool, so I'll click on it in the toolbox. I'm going to go down to the tool options and click on this brush preview. And I'm going to choose basic brushes. And this basic brush set, it starts out with some hard edge brushes in different sizes and then it goes to these soft edge brushes in different sizes and I want a soft edge brush. You can just double click on any one of these soft edge brushes and that will make it the active brush and I'll also close down the preview. Now I'll move my cursor on top of my image and my brush is pretty small but we can quickly enlarge that by pressing the right bracket key 
Each time you press it, it gets a little bigger. And if you need to make your brush smaller, just press the left bracket key. I'm going to make it about that big. We want to make sure that the foreground color is set to white because we're going to be painting on that black layer mask. If we painted with black, of course, it would have no effect. That gives us a clue. If we look and see our layer mask is black, then we know that our foreground color needs to be white. And now I'm just going to start painting with that brush over the skin. And you can see that we get that smoothing effect. I don't want to paint over any of the details like right under her cheek there or around the nostrils on her nose or her eyes. I don't want to smooth those out. I'm just going to smooth out the skin. Some of these highlights, I'm going to leave those too because we, we want those to show through. Now I'm going to make my brush a little smaller by pressing the left bracket key so I can get into these smaller areas. I'll paint in there and between her eye and her eyebrow. And above her lip here, but I don't want to get too close to her nose. I want to keep that detail. And brush under this eye and cheek. See, I got that black coming in. I don't want that. So if something like that happens, you have two choices. You can either just, if you see it right away, you can press Command or Control Z to undo it. Or you can switch your foreground color from white to black by either pressing the letter X on your keyboard or clicking this little double-headed arrow down here. You were painting with black, so I can paint back over that area to bring it back. And now I'll switch it back to white. Get her neck a little bit here. And any of these areas. So just brush over it until you've covered all the skin area that you want to smooth out. Maybe a little more right here. Let's take a look at our before and after. And we can do that by clicking on the eye next to layer one in the layers panel. Click it off, there's our before, and there's our after. Before and after. It's quite a change, quite an improvement. If you think that's a little too much, you can always lower the opacity of that layer by clicking right on the word opacity and then dragging over towards the left with your mouse. And you can see the further I go over to the left, the more detail comes back through from the background layer. I think I'll leave this image at around 70%. Look at the before and after again, and I think that looks pretty good. So that's all there is to it that ends this tutorial on how to quickly smooth skin with Photoshop Elements. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.